Hello, I'd like to welcome you here tonight. This is Wednesday, April 22nd. I'm coming to you tonight from our fellowship hall where we normally have our Wednesday night prayer meeting and our time of fellowship. I pray that you and your family are healthy and staying safe. I want to encourage you if you have accepted the 40 days of faithfulness challenge to keep on keeping on. I know many of you have committed to read your Bible and to pray and to speak positive words or to exercise or however you felt the Lord leading you to commit over these next 40 days. Please know that if you have already missed the day, know that God is more concerned about our progress than our perfection and so know that you can start back today if maybe you missed yesterday and and you can continue to be committed to the lord but i want to speak to you tonight about something uh, that i told you i would speak to you about last week you remember last week we talked about the importance of giving our hearts and lives fully surrendered to jesus christ that we all need to have a personal relationship with Christ. And I walked you through a plan of salvation, how we can know for sure that we are saved. And then I told you the next step would be about baptism. I'm so thankful that after I accepted Christ at age 12, I followed through with believers baptism. My brother Tim and I accepted Christ at the same time. We made our public profession of faith at the same time, and then we were baptized by my brother Terry, who was a minister, who is a minister, and so grateful that we were baptized in Elkhorn Creek, and what a special time that was. And baptism is an outward symbol of our inside faith. I don't believe that baptism, baptism is a requirement for salvation, but it, it is a requirement because of salvation. And I wanna share with you tonight the importance of baptism. And after we give our hearts and lives fully surrendered to Christ, and then we follow through with believers baptism. And I would like to share with you from God's word some passages that speak specifically about baptism. Hear these words found in Matthew chapter three, begin with verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness then john consented as soon as jesus was baptized he went up out of the water and at that moment heaven was open and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting on him and a voice from heaven said this is my son whom i love I am pleased with him. What a beautiful story that Jesus was baptized. Why was Jesus baptized? Well, he said first that it was to fulfill all righteousness from God. We know that Jesus had consecrated or committed himself to God the Father. And God was showing Jesus that he was fully approved by him. He fulfilled all requirements of righteousness as the Messiah. And so Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness, but he also was baptized to begin his earthly ministry. John publicly announced him as the Messiah and Jesus, when he was baptized, began his earthly ministry. I believe Jesus was also baptized so he could identify with our sin and with our failure, our shortcomings. Even though Jesus was without sin, he didn't need to be baptized because he was a sinner. 
but he was baptized so he could identify with our sin and our failure. Then I believe lastly, he was baptized to set an example for us. And so why are we to be baptized? Well, number one, it pleased God the Father. He said, this is my son whom I love and I'm well pleased. It pleased God the Father that Jesus was baptized and we know it pleases him when we are baptized. Again, baptism as an outward symbol of our inward faith. And then we also are baptized to be obedient to God's Word. Remember in Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission, begin with verse 18, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and surely I am with you always even until the end of the age. So we know that Jesus wanted us to go out, wanted his disciples, wants us to go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so when we baptize people, we say, I baptize you, my brother, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But we also read in Acts chapter 2, after the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, remember that Peter preach that first spirit-filled sermon after the Holy Spirit came to the early church. And in verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. So we know that the message of repentance and baptism not only was from John and not only from Jesus, but also Peter preached that same message. To repent again means to have a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of direction. I used to be living like this in my sin, but now I'm turning it around and I'm walking in a whole new direction. And so I pray tonight that we would repent from our old habits, our old ways, and we would walk in newness of life and and maybe through this 40 days of faithfulness you are going to give your life to christ and then you will be ready to take that next step with believers baptism now there's a passage uh, that's found in matthew chapter 10 verses 32 and 33 when jesus said whoever acknowledges me before others i will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown them before my Father in heaven. So when you've seen people walk up at the end of the service to give their life to Christ, we call that a public profession of faith. And the reason we do that is that Jesus was not ashamed to die for you and for me on the cross. We should not be ashamed to acknowledge our faith and trust in Him before others. And I always tell people, I think either you need to, what we call, walk the aisle and give your life to Christ before people, or either your baptism needs to be before others. You're saying, hey, I'm on God's team. I'm not ashamed of Him who is willing to die for me. Jesus died publicly for us. We should acknowledge Him and not be ashamed of him before others. So we are to be baptized because Jesus was baptized, because we were instructed in the Great Commission that we are to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We also know that Peter preached, repent and be baptized, every one of you. And we know again that for the forgiveness of our sins comes through our faith in God, but the baptism is a symbol of our forgiveness that we have received from the Lord. 
And then in Romans chapter 6, Paul shares these beautiful words, beginning with verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Again, we see the importance of being buried. When we go under the water, we are buried with Christ in baptism. Symbolic that our old lives, our old sinful lives are being buried when we go under the water. But then when we come up out of the water, it's symbolic that we are rising from the old life. We are rising from our spiritual death into new life and a new life spiritually. And it also represents just as Christ died on the cross and was buried in a tomb, he rose from the grave to show we have victory over death. And so it's a symbol of our freedom. I often share with children and adults. It's like the American flag is a symbol of our freedom that we have for the blood that was shed to bring us freedom and the purity of the flag and the purity of our relationship with Christ and the blood that was shed on the cross to save us from our sins. We have been cleansed. The old has been buried. We rise to walk in newness of life. I just recently received a call. I've shared with you in the last few weeks of several people that have been accepting Christ during this time of crisis and through this pandemic and, and through this terrible virus that we've been experiencing. I'm so grateful that even through this season, people are coming to know Christ personally. But I received a call about a week or so ago from one of our members sharing that a, that a young man was ready to be baptized and he, he was wanting to know if I would baptize him. And, and I shared with my brother in the Lord that right now we are just wanting people to stay in and stay safe, but I would be honored and, and it would be my privilege to baptize him as soon as as all this craziness ends and and maybe you have been awaiting baptism we often tell folks when they join this church if if you've already been baptized then we recognize that and and we we accept you as a as a brother a sister in christ and and maybe sometimes people join and they've been baptized in another denomination and and we certainly honor and we don't uh, take that away from you, but we believe in an immersion where we baptize going under the water, even though we realize just as this pandemic is happening, uh, we are not able to be together in person to do the baptism. But I thought about the criminal on the cross. Do you remember when he... His other, the other criminal on the cross was hurling insults at Jesus. And, and do you remember the one criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. And so that criminal was nailed to a cross. He, he couldn't jump off the cross and run down to the Jordan to be baptized. But Jesus said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. So we know that if you are physically able, it is important that you would be baptized. It's closely associated with our salvation in Christ. Again, I believe it's, it's through God's grace and our faith in Him that we are saved. But as a symbol of our salvation in Christ, we are to be baptized. 
And maybe you've been putting off being baptized. You know what I would love? I would love when all of this is over that we would have a large group of people ready to follow through believers baptism and maybe you've been going to church your whole life maybe you've been in church for years and maybe you feel like you have a personal relationship with christ but you've not been baptized i want to encourage you to follow through again it's symbolic of our sins being cleansed washed away the old life is being buried and we rise to walk in newness of life I want to share with you a few excuses people have given me why they have not been baptized. And you're going to laugh at some of these, but I promise you it's the truth. One of the reasons people have said they did not want to be baptized is because they said that when their hair gets wet, their ears stick out and they didn't want people to see their, their ears sticking out. Another has said because they're afraid of the water and when you go under the water um, they they're afraid of having to hold their breath or maybe drowning and and i want to promise you in all all my years of ministry i've i've never dropped anyone i've i've had some challenges to pull some big old guys up before but through god's help and through his power and his spirit i've been able to pull them up even though i've had some people that have offered me money to hold people under for a period of time. I'm just kidding. But the fact is, some have not been comfortable around water. And I said, listen, I'll make it as quick and as painless as possible and know that God will keep you safe as you're being baptized. I've had others to say, I've got back problems and I, I don't know if, if I can go backward. Well, I understand that to be true, but I've actually baptized people going forward so they did not have to go backward or, or some that have had other health reasons. And know too that I have baptized folks when we have not been able to use a baptistry or, or go to Elkhorn Creek like we do each year, once or twice a year to do baptisms for those who want to be baptized in the creek. I've gone to penitentiaries before or to prison to baptize folks with, with a glass of water or a vase of water when we did not have access to a baptistry. I've baptized folks when they've been in the hospital bed or on their deathbed and they cannot get up after they've received Christ to go to a baptistry. And so again, symbolically, I've poured a cup of water over their head, or maybe they've been terminally ill, and I've poured water. Again, it's symbolic of our faith in the Lord. And even though I shared with you just a few moments ago that when you unite with this church to identify with this local body of Christ, we encourage you to be immersed if you have not. It doesn't mean that we don't think that you're a Christian or that you haven't been saved or that that baptism didn't count. We know it was meaningful to you, but to identify with this local body of believers, if you're physically able, we, we encourage you to be baptized. And maybe tonight, again, you've accepted Christ into your heart and you've never followed through with believers' baptism. I pray that you would give serious thought and prayer to following through, acknowledging your faith and trust in the Lord before people and or being baptized in front of people to show that you're not ashamed of the one who is not ashamed of you and me when he died on the cross. And, and to know that one day after we die, these old bodies give out that will rise to be with him in heaven and we celebrate that but i encourage you tonight again to stay faithful that you would continue to live for christ if you've made the commitment to the 40 days of challenge that you'll stick with it and even if you've messed up or missed the day i encourage you to get right back to it today and know that it's not too late you can start afresh and anew and 
And again, I just want you to know how much I and we miss you. I'm thinking about you, praying for you. We love you so much and we can't wait until we can be back together. And, and our staff we've been talking about, we don't know what it's going to look like and uh, when that's going to be, but just keep on praying and staying faithful and, and know that God is going to work all things out for our good and for His glory. His timing is perfect. There is a reason and a season for what we're going through. And I pray that what we'll get from it is that we're growing closer to the Lord, that our country and our world are having our spiritual eyes open to say if there was ever a time to get my life right with Christ, it would be now because we're not sure of what's going to happen tomorrow. But I want to have a time of prayer with you, which we do each week. And after I pray, I'm grateful again for all of our musicians who have been doing a beautiful job throughout the course of this quarantine and isolation. Some have been here in person while others have made recordings. And I'm so grateful that Kathy Parrott and Carrie Casey made a beautiful recording of a song out by the cross that we're going to play after this uh, time of prayer. But again, thank you so much for worshiping with us tonight. Again, I challenge you if you have not received Christ to to pray and receive him into your heart and to confess your sin and and then that you might make a commitment that when all this is over which i've had many people to tell me when all this is over we're coming to church or we're going to to be baptized and and i hope you're one of those folks that you and your family will make that commitment and again i would be humbled and honored to share in that special time in your life. But right now, could we just uh, go to the Lord in prayer? God, I thank you so much for this time where we could come together and fellowship. And, and even though, Lord, it's not the same as being together in person, I'm grateful that we can still have this time together uh, through uh, YouTube or, or live stream or Facebook. And Lord, I pray tonight that you would just be with folks who are on the verge of accepting you as their Lord and Savior. Or maybe even tonight, someone's going to pray that simple prayer that we talked about last week, or one like it, to begin their faith journey. Maybe they're going to pray even tonight, Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sin. I ask you to come in to my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. I love you, Jesus. If someone could pray a simple prayer much like that and begin their eternal life even now by receiving you into their heart, I know the angels will be rejoicing in heaven, and we will as well. Father, I pray if there are folks that have been in church for years, and they have not followed through with believers' baptism. Oh God, I pray that they would make that commitment. And Lord, knowing that I'll make it as easy as possible, whether it be a, a small family baptism or whether it's public in front of the whole church, but Lord, we know that they need to acknowledge You before people in some form because You acknowledged us before your father and we don't ever want to be ashamed of you and what you've done for us and father i pray for all those on our prayer list we have so many that are still father battling some other illness whether it be some form of cancer or going through chemotherapy or radiation oh god we pray for healing Father, we pray for this coronavirus to end soon. And Father, that you would just receive the glory for the victory you're going to bring. Continue, God, to be with all of our leaders on the national level and local, that you would give them wisdom as they are wanting what's best for us. And may we fulfill our Christian responsibility to pray for those who lead 
that father they might follow your lead in every decision and lord we just pray again for all of those uh on the front lines wherever it might be whether it's doctors or or nurses or again paramedics or fire personnel or emts or police officers or or grocery store workers or or folks at work father in business but lord keep everyone safe that soon this these numbers are going to curve and it's going to begin to decline so father in the meantime keep us patient and father that we would not lose heart and lord we're just going to thank you in advance for again the victory we're trusting you to bring bless every family here tonight god and keep them safe and lord i pray that um, we would not be tempted to give up during this time but we would cling to you like never before and trust in you and know that we have the power of your spirit to help us to overcome we love you lord and we praise you in the strong name of jesus amen one more thing i want to remind you of before kathy and carrie lead us we're going to be tempted during this season and i'm feeling led to talk to you more about that on sunday but during this 40 days of faithfulness you're going to be tempted probably like never before remember when jesus right after he was baptized after that spiritual high in his life he was led into the desert by the spirit to be tempted by the devil and as jesus was fasting and praying in the desert the devil was tempting him during those 40 days so you better know you're going to be tempted during this 40 days but i pray through god's strength that you will stay strong and know that he will be with you and he will be with me but again thank you so much for worshiping tonight Thank you, Carrie and Kathy, for leading us tonight. And I pray God's blessings and His protection upon you. And again, I love you and can't wait until we can see each other face to face. Oh, mm -hmm.